On today's show, we're talking with Lisa Crawford, writer, producer, and actress, about her new series, Pink is In. Movie Making with Renell Golden is brought to you by Samira Entertainment, supporting indie films and the filmmakers who create them. Stop by their website to learn more, www.samiraentertainment.com. That's www.samiraentertainment.com. Hello, everybody. I am here with Lisa Crawford. Uh, she is a content creator, a producer, a writer, and an actress. Um, there isn't much you don't do when it comes to making movies now. How are you doing today, Lisa? I'm doing so well. Thank you for having me on. Very excited to have you here. I was looking at your new series, um, Pink is In, and it looks very funny. Uh, so I, I can't wait to like get to talk about that. But first, I wanted to cover a little bit about your experience becoming a um, content creator because you you got started in I think it was 2017 taking yeah. acting classes and yeah in 2016 I I, I read a, a article and 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 it says oh you can make two hundred dollars a day doing background and my son had left left home so I thought I'm going to do what I want to do and and as a kid I always dreamt about making movies or being in the film business and and I said so so the end of 2016 I I did some background work and I was look I was in one of James Franco's films oh um, cool yeah and I think it was called Ken and I was watching a scene in the casino and I was watching the actors and I said I think I can do that and then <laughs> I just end of 2016 in December I started taking acting lessons and that's where it all started oh wow wow um so the first time you walked on camera and you actually had dialogue and you know you were doing more of a prominent role were you terrified or did you just totally love it no yeah I, so I started um uh taking lessons December the, the 17th in 2016 and then in January I got my first role and it was a student film but it was silent on camera so I didn't have dialogue <laughs> um but uh but yeah there was you know more reactions and that kind of thing so it was kind of fun but I do remember getting my first um uh, uh acting job at, with dialogue and it was a, a a role I felt so passionate about and I really rehearsed and I, and I managed to get that role and it was it was rare. It was really exciting. Was it a drama to, or um it it was a it, it was a pilot that was called Dreamers. Um they were gonna pitch it to the networks, but I don't think that it went anywhere because I never heard, you know. It's a hard business, yeah. It, it, it is a hard business. And you know, when you start off and you're non union, you you volunteer a lot. And I did quite a few films where you get paid nothing or very little. And even having speaking roles, um, you know, I was on shows uh like Broken Famous, um, that were USO oh, shows. Oh, right, right. Yeah, and the, there was another one called uh, Celebrity Feud or something similar like that. So so I did some of those, and there was a little bit of dialogue, and but they were just the most funnest shoots to do. You loved it. Do you have a preference between film and television? Um, I'm actually, I've, I've produced um, mostly short films, and I, so then I've done the television show Pink is In. So um, that has been awesome because you just get to come back the next year and do it again. You're like a but, family. But we, yeah, but we are pitching, we are working on a sequel to Pink is In, a feature film. So I'm really hoping to, to get that done either this year or next year. Oh, that's exciting. All right, so Pink is In. Where did you get the idea for it and how was it born? I was actually on a set uh, called New Eden and it was a, a prison, it was a mockumentary and it was uh, um, about a prison scene. So they, I, I played one of the prisoners, I was the muscle of the prisoner and a friend of mine, <laughs> yeah. Caroline, was playing one of the prison guards 
And I had so much fun on that show that, I, that at the end of when we wrapped, I went to Carol and I said, we have to do a, a comedy about a woman's prison. And about a month later, we met up and we started, you know, coming up with brainstorming. Like, yeah, brainstorming. And uh, I'm reading an article in the States about um, that they use pink in some of the male prisoners to kind of calm the prisoners down. Oh, so wow. pink always stuck in my head. So I was writing things. I said, pink is in jail, pink is in prison. And then I crossed out prison and I said, okay, I'm just going to go for pink as it. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. How long did it take you before you were actually able to like film the pilot? And was it an easy process for you or did you have to, to really open a lot of doors? Well, what we did is um, by then I had become a union actor uh, because I got my first credit on Umbrella Academy. Oh, I um, love that show. Yeah, I mean, just the opening scene. It's a very small actor role, but I'm there. But yeah, so oh. once I was union... Um, I met up with so many other cool um, actors and actresses and I said, when we came up with that idea, I said, let's shoot a teaser. So I got quite a few of the people I knew, we got together and it was December 2019 before the pandemic and oh. we shot a teaser of the premises of Pinker's Inn, which we said is going to be a rundown prison run by this warden that's trying to come up with all these new inventive ways to keep the prison going. So we did the <laughs> teaser and, um, you know, one of the things I said, and this is a good advice to anybody uh, in filmmaking, is I said, I want to do the teaser really high, good quality. So we, I was lucky we met a really good DOP, Raymond, and we, sh um, he was actually from the States and he's married a, uh, somebody from Canada, so he was yeah, and he came from a commercial background, so he was different style, oh, but I loved his wow. style. Yeah, so we shot this teaser, and we started shopping around, and by um, June of the next year, we got the green lit by Bell 5 to, oh, to wow. do uh, so during, the first season, yeah. Oh my goodness, so during the pandemic, you got green lit? Yes, we got green light during the pandemic, and it was oh uh, wow! Yeah, that you know we were we show. were all we were all in lockdown. Uh, you know because I remember it was March seventeenth when they really called uh, in Ontario. They called the state of emergency, and we were all locked down. So I said to our writer Kim and Caroline, I said, while we're in lockdown, let's work on episodes. So we spent the lockdown writing these episodes and hammering it out so by the time we got picked up in june we were ready oh my gosh that's so cool and then um you did you film during lockdown yes we did and you know it was we were in uncharted waters because we filmed that same year um i think it was in october or september uh, no no it was in september and um yeah, it was so new to us and we were so worried about somebody getting COVID and getting shut down and yeah. we went through a few scares, uh, but it was all a new process and they hadn't even started the tests then. So oh, like wow. if, if anybody had a cold or, or a cough, they like, just stay, don't stay. Come. Yeah, yeah, just don't <laughs> come. But you oh, know what? God. We we got through it. We got through it and... and uh, you know and, and everybody lived was, to tell Hopefully. yes yes <laughs> that's huge and so when did the show premiere it premiered the the next year in 2021 so with Belfar they're small networks so they just wanted four episodes um so that's why we just did four and then the second season we did another four and the third season we did another four so we've now oh, got three seasons 12. already three seasons but they're short but we've created this into one big season and that's what we're trying to launch into the united states so we have 12 episodes it's actually 11 episodes and one is a christmas special oh nice okay yeah. that's exciting so how did um how did your casting go did you do that all local or um yeah so what it is is the ones the, that helps with the teaser they obviously got a role but it was very interesting about a few days before um shooting the teaser the woman that was supposed to play the warden 
uh, couldn't get time off work. So I called Darren and Darren has um, is our producing partner and he has uh, he worked in the um, the theatre and he had a lot of connections with a lot of great actors and actresses. Oh, so I said, lovely. we need somebody to play the warden. And he immediately said, Ellie Ray Hennessy. She's the really great voice actor. She actually um, does My Little Pony. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, she does a lot of the animated. So, so Ellie came on. You know, it was interesting when we said to Ellie it's to play a warden she agreed she had not seen the script she didn't even know the name oh, of, wow. the, of the show and she said yes and the reason was yeah. she actually had it on her vision board to play a war warden and a, on an award-winning oh, it's television meant to be. show oh, my yeah goodness. it was just meant to be That's so it's so, a yeah cool. Yeah, so the rest of the cast, uh, Darren did the cast, and he was really, he's so great at, you know, just finding the right people, and we just got the people together, and, you know, with COVID, we didn't have much, time we didn't have any rehearsals, so it was like, come on the day, shoot the scene, and we were on such a tight budget and tight schedule, like, we just couldn't do too many takes, so everybody just bought the A game. That's good. That yeah, uh, I filmed during the pandemic too, and it was it was different. And we were a union film, so it was a little bit scary because we already had the restrictions were tremendous. Everyone had to be tested every other day. Oh, yeah. You had to have nurses on set. It was it was just scary, and you couldn't mess up at all because you didn't have the budget. So no, I know because yeah, because when we did season two and three, by then. Yeah, all the, uh, the testing came in place and the regulations. So we oh, were wow. doing that. And we actually had in season three, we had two of our main cast uh, had COVID and they were critical. So we had to rewrite oh, my the gosh. scene, like the, the main season finale, like the final episode, which is actually a big season finale for all three seasons. So we had to rewrite it, but I was really happy every time we've had to make a change. It came uh, we out had, better? It came out better. We had another thing in season Yay. two. We had this critical scene and one of the actresses, yeah, they were sick and they just had a cold uh, and we just couldn't risk them coming to set. Yeah. So, so yeah, we on the day we had to rewrite the scene, but it, it always worked out for the better. You know, yeah, it's, oh, it's always better. Right? Yeah. It, it has to be because the show must go on. <laughs> yes, it has to go on. Oh, my goodness. Um, so the goal now is to get it released in the United States? Yes. Um, at the moment, they've got it on um, uh, Amazon Prime, but it's on video de on demand. But we're hoping to get onto other networks, possibly like Tubi. I know they're talking to Peacock. Uh, so we're really hoping that it's going to be readily available, uh, you know, to the American market, because we're hoping that we're going to be the next Canadian. Some people have touted us uh, to be the next Canadian hit, you know, following shows like Trailer Park Boys, oh, uh, Shit's wow. Creek, uh, oh, On the I Gas, know. and all, okay. of, all of those. What do you, can you give away something crazy that happened in any of the storylines? Oh, there's quite a few. Well, uh, they, they did. <laughs> yeah, I can. Uh, they, they did. They did sneak in a male stripper into the prison. <laughs> Are you so, yeah. So, awesome. Oh so my there's, gosh. There's, there's some crazy things that happened. This was a really crazy, wacky show. You know, we we made it as pure entertainment. There's just no political or social messages. And we do have uh, really proud of being such a diverse cast. You know, we just have characters who just happen to be played by a straight, gay, transgender, genderqueer person. Yes. We, don't, we don't make an issue of who they are. It just happens to their character. That's, I love that's it. who I it love was it. played by. And that's how it should be. That, yes. That's too awesome. I was yeah. thinking you were going to tell me you did crazy things like bake sales to try to save the prison or something. Oh, there's, there's a few uh, crazy selfie with a con. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so. I, I definitely want to check it out. So it, we can find it on Amazon. And 
And then anybody in Canada can obviously watch it over there. Um, yeah. What channel is it on in Canada? In Canada, it's on uh, Belfast TV One. So, but we are really hoping to get it on other networks because it's very uh, limited to just Bell subscribers that have access to it. So we're hoping to get some other. Uh, we are speaking to some other networks. So I just don't want to mention who they are. No, but, I need uh, to yeah, we that. have we have American distributor uh, Port and Craig, and they hoping to get it on to some of the other the main streaming networks as That's soon as exciting. possible. Yeah, yeah, because we have eight ready. The next uh, for. The end of this month, the exclusivity will be done, and then they can air those four. So then that will give us a total of 12. And as I said, it is one long strip, and it's got a really major season finale. And the oh, last it sounds so cool. Uh, besides this show, do you have other shows that you're going to be working on, or are you working on new seasons of this one? Um, we do, we have written other ones, and as I said, I, we have done a few uh, uh, short films. Uh, one of them we did sell to a network, which is really cool because most people say you don't make money with a short film, but yeah. we were able to sell one, so wow. that was pretty cool. But yeah, but what we're doing is we're working on this feature film called Big Stones. It's a heist comedy. Oh, I love and it. And it is, uh, it's, a, it's a prequel to how one of the inmates got into prison. <laughs> so this is going to be a fun movie that, that we're looking to shoot. Uh, if we get the funding and the means to do it, we're going to do it as soon as possible. I love it. You know, I was, I was talking to my, my son, who he and I are writers, and we work together on our projects. But mm -hmm. we were talking about the world needs more comedy just for laughing yes yes it is you know it's interesting ellie ray um who plays the warden uh she was just saying to me and says you know comedy heals and and i really do believe that yeah. because it, it is when you when you can just take a break from laugh life and you know laughter is so healthy for you yes it is it is and i don't know what happened because when i was growing up in the 80s like we had tgi friday you know, thank yeah. God it's Friday. Thank God it's funny. And it just seems like it's, it's not, it's just not there anymore in the quantity that we need it every once in a while. And so when we see a show like, you know, Pink is it uh, in rather it's, it's like, oh my gosh, something to make me laugh. I don't have to think about the world. It's just marvelous. And, um, you know, I hopefully it'll get here in the United States and you'll do more seasons. But um, so do you have a favorite besides Pink is in that you've ever done? Do you have a favorite movie that you um, love to do? I have to say, you know, as I said, because I got into the business so late in life. So I did my first two films in 2018 and then 2019 I did another one called Digging Up Dorothy. That was a fun uh, short film. Uh, but I, I will have to say at the moment, Pink is in, uh, is, okay. uh, is one of favorite because we have such a great team behind us. You know, uh, and the success of the show really has been this great collaboration. And from the day one, when we did the teaser, everybody speaks about the magic. There's just this magical feeling on set. I and, love and, it. And that just it flows through all cast and crew and that's how we're able to make such a great product because everybody is just enjoying it and, there. and just giving their best yeah that they're present their heart and soul is kind of there um so i, I really admire that you know you started your career and you have you've broken down barriers you've already got a series out there that you know you take into market it's playing on a network um i, I think that's amazing but uh, it, what advice would you give to somebody who's like all right i want to go and do this regardless of their age 
I, I would say, well, in my case, I always joke to people. I said, because I started so late in life, um, what takes you 10 years, I have to do it in one year. So, <laughs> uh, so it, what it is, is you have to stay positive. And I, I was just saying to everybody that um, the key to success is never to give up. And, and, and you really have to find you're going to have obstacles thrown in your way. But this is what I say, you know, when people say, yeah, but if I knock on a door, I don't get an answer, the door doesn't open. Um, but if you keep knocking on the door, eventually a door will open for you. Yes. And, you know, if somebody says, oh, but I have to knock on 20 doors before somebody says yes. I said, that's a good thing for every time you get a no, you're getting closer to the yes. Yes. Yeah. And and that's what it is. And, and you do have to set your goal. Um and really focus on that and believe in yourself, believe in the project and imagine, and I know this comes down to a little bit of uh, manifestation, is imagine you have to close your eyes and imagine getting that news that your show got picked up and you play it into your head. You're kind of and manifesting it. Manifest it and it happens. Oh, I love that. I love that. Somebody told me um, in one of my interviews and it just stuck with me that they they didn't mind getting a no because if somebody tells you no you're not actually that's not like putting you back a step that means no. they know who you are they know what you're doing and maybe exactly in the you, yes but it puts no. you closer it, it was brilliant and what you just said plays right into that like a no is not it's not something to feel defeated over it is one step closer to the yes Yes. Um, one of the first things when I did uh, start acting, one of the first things they did tell me um, with the acting lessons is you have to have a thick skin. You be prepared for a lot of rejection. Yes. And once you have that mindset and and then when it happens, it's okay, I move on to the next store, you know, and um, and just say, okay, maybe it's not suited for them. But I always believe that there is a place, I always felt there will be a home for Pinkers in. Somebody will like it and somebody's going to take it. And that's what you have to have that mindset. So, yeah, like I said, don't ever take a no uh, for answer. And, and sometimes you can just step back and just look at, you know, and just say, are you presenting it the right way? And... One of the things they, one of the other strong advice I'd give to people, if you are getting the chance to pitch something, show your passion, let the people see your passion about the project. That's and that brilliant. will, you know, they'll feel that positive vibes coming from you. Yes, that that's really good advice. How has your life changed since you started doing these things? Oh, I'm loving it because, you know, it's funny, I was... Um, on set one day, it was just, uh, just I got hired background using my car for designated survivor. And I was sitting in the, uh, in the car when they were shooting the scene. And I just realized, I said, wow, I'm actually living my childhood dream. <laughs> and, and I said, you know, I remember being a kid because I grew up with my, my father had these silent movies and, and oh, wow. I grew up in South Africa. We didn't have television until late. So we, mm -hmm. we really relied on film. And I said, you know, one day I'm going to go to, to Hollywood and become a filmmaker. And this is when I was a kid and I never even thought that would happen. And right. then one day I realized and said, oh, I'm living my dream. Because, you know, they call Toronto Hollywood North. Oh, I was, you're there. Yeah, I said, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm actually doing my dream. And, and so, yeah, it, it's just so fulfilling when you can do something that you're really passionate about. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's something that to me, it's not even work. It's pure pleasure. You look forward to it each day, which must mean it's the right thing. Yes. Good thing. So, um, well, tell us again where we can see pink is in so at the moment if you can go to amazon prime um you will see in the uk and usa you will see we have eight episodes there the, another three episodes and plus the christmas will be up soon so at the moment that's where it is but 
I'm hoping soon that our distributor is going to give me the call and say, it's available on this network. They're and going so, to. I have yeah. to. Yes. <laughs> it you. looks too good not to. And and it's uh, it's filled with joy because it's laughter. Yes. So, um, all right. Well, I like to do this thing that I call um, five for five, our last few minutes. And okay. what I do is I'm going to ask you some questions that um, people can get to know you better as a person. And don't worry, it's not who you're dating this week. Nothing like okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's just silly ones that are yeah. simple. But whenever you're ready, I'm going to do the five I'm for ready. five. All right, here we go. First one is pretty easy. What's your favorite food? Um, I love curries. Oh, my God. I, I just oh. enjoy curry. Oh, yummy, right? Our house is full of curry. My children's father is from India. Every kind of curry. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Oh, my goodness. All right. What's your favorite thing to drink after a long day on set? You know, I I have to say, yeah, if you've been working hard, I... I and really ice cold beer can really go down well. Ah, yep. Yep. It's good. Good thing. Okay. What is one thing you have always dreamed of doing, but you have not done yet? One of the crazy things I've always wanted to do, and I know this might sound crazy, is actually driving one of these muscle cars and Right over a ramp and fly that's not crazy at all. <laughs> I would love to do that. I mean, so like to driving. Do that. <laughs> oh my gosh, like a, a Dodge Charger or something, right? Those yeah, those muscle or Mustang or something. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be a big jump, but just at all four <laughs> wheels off one. the ground. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just as though you did it. I love those cars. Any kind of muscle car, I'm crazy about it. Yeah. I kind of have a similar dream. That's funny. <laughs> uh, what's if your favorite song to sing at the top of your lungs when you're driving in the car? Oh, wow. That's a little tough one. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, oh, I like, you know, so many different artists that maybe one of the songs from Journey. Oh, um, yeah. That, that could be. I, 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 I have such a different range even uh just for fun. Uh, elton john uh, yes. song you know yeah there's so many i can't even answer that when people ask me i'm like um i don't know <laughs> i do i will say you want uh, uh elton john song daniel's traveling to on a plane because i used to love traveling oh. and i remember i used to sing the song before i left africa and i used to see the big planes at the international airport and I said one day I'm going to get on a plane I'm going to go explore the world and oh wow so that meant a lot to you yes, yes. I love that okay last one and this one is always very hard for filmmakers uh, content creators what's your favorite movie oh that's actually an easy one is it Greece <laughs> Greece Greece uh, oh uh -huh. yeah okay I have seen Greece maybe 20 to 30 times and I never get tired of it. And oh, it was just, yeah. uh, you know, one of those movies when it came out, uh, I just kept going back and seeing it and, and it, I just loved it. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't say one of their songs then, like Summer Lovin' or I, yeah. I can't even remember, right? <laughs> oh, that's yeah. so awesome. Yeah, I, I grew up with that movie, so... I love that. Well, you have been wonderful to have on the show today. And um, I look forward to talking to you again. If you do get distributed or you want to come back, just let me know. And I'd love to hear what, you know, is happening with Pink is In or your next project. Oh, it would be a pleasure. And thank you, Al, for having me on. It was such a You're pleasure welcome. to be on. Thank you. Thank All you. All right. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. You too. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Today's show is sponsored by Gym Kitty. Helping women on their health and wellness journey by providing high quality, organically sourced vitamins and supplements. Visit them today at www.jimkitty.net. You've been listening to Movie Making with Renelle Golden. Be sure to come back for our next episode where we bring you the people who make movies you love. Got a topic about filmmaking you want to hear on our podcast? Send us an email at moviemakingpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.
This podcast has been sponsored by Samara Entertainment.